Hello and welcome back to the Digital Marketing Podcast. My name is Kieran Rogers. I'm Louise Crossley. And I'm Daniel Rolls. And today we are discussing a content planning process. Okay, so we, we cover content a lot. We, mm. we've, it's, an, it's still essential to all digital marketing. But we've got to the stage now, the level of noise of content being created was ridiculous anyway. Now, all these AI tools have come along. It's got even more ridiculous. I've said it before. If you create average content, you might as well not bother creating content. Mm. But that means we probably need to take a step back and look at our content planning process. And we've kind of refined and uh, iterated ours. Uh, we, we teach this on numerous courses as well. So it's worth kind of going through it. So the, the starting point, and you talk about the ivory tower of content planning, mm. is that you can't just sit there and go, I think we should do this. Sometimes you come up with great ideas. Yeah. But actually, you need to go, who's our target audience? So you start with your personas. Mm -hmm. So you split your audience into groups and you go, what are their objectives? What are their problems? What are their challenges? And then you look at the stages of the user journey and you go, what content do they need at each stage of the journey? But also, um, I need to understand what channel that content will live in. Is it our website? Is it in social media? Is it a podcast, video, whatever it might be? Um, and if you do that, if you understand your audience, you know their journey, you understand what channels they're using and what content you need, you basically have a digital strategy plan to some extent. Mm -hmm. um, and that's missing in most content planning, I would suggest. Then this is when it starts to get into the kind of the planning process. So uh, research to define the topic. Okay, so I, we'll, we'll kind of go around and I've got some sources I would get stuff from. Um, we use keyword research tools all the time. Mm -hmm. So we'll use things like um, trends to work out what search terms are trending. Answer the public. Answer the public for questions. Really good one to work out what questions to, to answer and I, so on I as well. I'm just using Google just to just to find the closely associated questions right. people also, or um, phrases people also yeah, use. If you yeah. just put a single word in, it tells you the other related words. And then it will give you all the questions I, as well. Yeah. So easy to uncover. Oh, gosh, I never thought about that. So when, right. you, when you're outlining, that's a really great place to start. Just type in a few obvious searches that somebody interested in that topic might search for and actually dig a couple of layers down and mm. you start finding all sorts of additional, oh, yeah, I could have that and have that and have that. That's why Keywords Ever is such a nice tool mm. because you can use Google as a research tool and mm. Keywords Ever will add in your search volumes for mm. you. So if you do that normal thing, you put a word in, the auto suggest appears after a few seconds. Um, keywords everywhere will put the volumes of searches within there as well. Um, so that's really good. Other places for research, um, I would go through and look at what your competitors are doing. Mm -hmm. So we've looked at it previously, competitors.app will allow you to go through and monitor all of your competitors and see the right. kind of moves they're making, the content they're creating. Actually, some of the best stuff there is like comes through the social feeds. Yeah. So actually, there's lots of tools out there that will do that. You just monitor your competitors' social mm. feeds and create a few lists and stuff. Um, and it's it's surprising, like oh that's that's nice doing an article on that's nice. Well, they don't have a monopoly on an article that, uh, about any subject. You could create an article about that subject, but what you need to do is create one that's substantially better, right? And that's always easy to do when someone else has set the benchmark. Well, let's let's yeah. talk about that. Yeah. We'll talk about the whole ten x mm. content yeah. thing as well. Um, but also at this point, I would probably look at the tool you introduced in the last episode, milled.com, mm. which is one that looks at people's emails, yeah, to see what they're publishing in email. Yeah. Uh, and then the thing that everyone misses, speak to your customers, please. Oh, yeah. We, we so will do easy. this now. Yeah. yeah, so we'll do this in our newsletter. At the end of the newsletter, we always ask a question. And that question has quite frequently been, what content should we be doing? Should we do a podcast? What video should we be doing? What, what courses should we be building? And we get loads of feedback and stuff. That we're going, oh, yeah, that's pretty obvious. We haven't done that in ages. Or we've never covered it. Um, so, for example, at the moment, we're going to build in schedule a load of uh, B2B versus b2c content what are the differences and what aren't the differences because you have this classic thing you go, oh we're b2b it doesn't work for us ah actually i would maybe disagree with that but it's you know how do you need to approach those two things differently i think so, also for a lot of people because they know their business inside and out it's easy to assume that you know what your customers are looking for that's the and ivory then you tower. base yeah, yeah. everything off of guesswork that is the ivory tower that i get so frustrated with that we, we we sit in our brainstorming meetings and we just come up and we spout brilliance yeah. and we love it because obviously our ideas are excellent but it doesn't matter if we love it. No, it's, you're not the audience. Like you're probably not even reading the end output. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the crazy that's, thing. That's the, well, that's, that's the awful thing. I'm like, how many podcasts? I, I'll have it now and again where I'll be in a hotel and I'm I'm sitting up late working and I'll be doing a little bit of research and I'll be on our podcast channel and I went, I've never listened back to any of these. And I listen back to them and actually I would like to say I listen back and go, 
this is actually pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it's yeah. all right. This actually takes some of the advice. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But the, the thing is, it's yeah, we, we've got to we've got to take that step back a little bit. So there's a load of sources for research, digital yeah. marketing toolkit, loads of stuff in there to help yeah. you do that. And that, like the experience I have with the brands, we, it's very easy to get stuck in this rut. And actually, our social media exec went out and like did a bit of a questionnaire on social. Oh, it's so like it's so refreshing. Mm. And actually, one of the things that we uncovered was that a lot of our customers don't really understand some of the core products. So we take it as red because we get them and we understand it. And actually, there's a mismatch there. And actually, we could just make them realize how brilliant they are. Yeah, they'd all probably try it and become regular customers and subscribe to it. I also think there's a balance in here as well because we we made the mistake. Like we have a real, we make an effort not to pitch our stuff in the podcast, right? It's like it's supposed to be building a relationship. It's there to provide value, and hopefully, then we build a relationship and people might find out what we do. I mean, I had someone that that got in contact via an email and was asking me about something. You know, I've been looking for a digital marketing training and online education company. And I was like, that's what we do. And she went, do you? <laughs> like to the point where she'd been listening to podcasts for 18 months and had no idea what we did whatsoever. Um, and I was like, oh, could you come and do some training in my company? I was like, yeah, that's what we do. And she was like, oh, do. okay. So, you know, there's, there's a balance, obviously. But that point of, of actually, you might say, well, there's no point talking about that. It's really basic. Your audience might not understand that at all. We've done that with our Q&A videos, so our so yeah. videos. <laughs> And actually answering lots of questions. Do you Because you, every time we do a podcast, we feel like we need to do something different. But actually, a lot of the fundamentals, a lot of people want it, some coverage of those. And going back to them and revisiting them, yeah. even people that know about them can be really it, useful as well. It's called the curse of the expert. Right. It's a big, go. big problem. You yeah. know, and actually ha- recognize not everybody in your audience is as expert in these subject areas as you are. That's kind of the whole point of content. Yeah. It helps them get up to speed. So, yeah. So let's come back to this 10x thing. So this is Rand Fishkin that was at Moz and then our own Spark Toro came up with this 10x thing. Um, there's a number of different kind of approaches to this as well. But the idea is you work out the topic that you're going to talk on. You then go off and research what else is out there on the topic. And you consume it and you kind of embrace it and you look at what's great about it. And then you say, how could we do this? 10 times better. I'm not sure I buy into the 10 times better bit because how on earth would you judge it in 10 times better? It's, but the it's principle, an it is, right? Yeah. And I think that's it. And it's, now it doesn't need to be longer. It doesn't need to be, you know, it, it needs to be unique in some way for a target audience, more concise, maybe longer, um, done beautifully, visually presented, interactive, whatever it is, but you need the better job than everything that's out there because otherwise you won't beat that stuff. And by creating stuff that's that great, you get the clicks, you get the engagement, you drive all the signals that the search engines and the social media platform algorithms want it, as well. It works. It works. And actually, it's like the 10x approach is a nice way of putting it. I think actually a lot of people have been doing it for years. Yeah, of course. Do you remember my knot tying course that I, I did do. years ago? Yeah, right? this so is a great little story, actually. I was working for a, a sailing academy at the time and I wanted to engage. You made me feel all nostalgic because yeah. we talked about this about about. Eight years ago, Gosh, I reckon, on the before, podcast. It was before the London Olympics, wasn't it? Because we did we we presented it at a thing helping businesses prepare for the Olympics, wasn't it? We did at the rowing lake. Yeah. Where they did the it's Olympic. Kind rowing. Of how wow. we got to work together, actually. It's the first time we worked that together. Anyway. It. Okay. Anyway. So <laughs> the idea behind for another that, time. The idea behind that was I wanted to create a free online drip feed sequence, actually, a free course for people to learn to, to tie knots. So we came up with like six knots every salty sea dog should know. And I spent ages looking at YouTube videos and knots, and I realized that most of them were flawed. Because when you tie a knot, and this is a visual thing, so you might need to watch the, the video <laughs> of this. When you tie a knot, what when I show that to a camera, what you see is me doing the knot back to front. Yeah, because you, it gets really it's not in front of you. Yeah. So we solved that by putting a like a literally dangled a camera on a tripod over my instructor's head. It was terribly dangerous. Um it wouldn't, <laughs> have, safety, it wouldn't have made the health and safety um yeah risk assessment, but we did it anyway. Um and and it made it so much easier. Um and that's all that's all that was. But that that course, like because it was free, loads of people did it. But what we found was we got a massive influx of people then booking our short courses. Right. Because they'd already done it was kind of like a free chocolate taster. Yeah. Like they'd already had the free chocolate and they liked it. So actually, why wouldn't I then want to go on and, and learn more? Because I got some value out of that. Right. And, and that 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 changed everything. It was so much better than even going out with a discount. And this is like a big, exciting thing for everybody listening out there. You don't need to drive the price down. Not at all. Actually, you can create, and this is what's so exciting about digital, you can create all sorts of free, dig, I call them digital products. Mm. That like could be a how-to or it could be... Yeah, something really informative or it could be comparison but it's a free taster of what you do mm-hmm. and then that goes on because now i've now I've, your foot's in the door actually 
you, uh, you know, I'm, I'm easy pickings. This is this middle, top middle of the funnel bit where top of the funnel, I'm trying to grab your attention, give you something useful. But if I go middle of the funnel, which is give you some content that provides value, but is in the ballpark of what I do, yeah. then suddenly I can go, well, if you like this, you probably like this stuff that we've got as well. And I don't even need to shout that at you because I've demonstrated it to you from that point as well. So I think that's really important. I think that actually, if you go and take the content you've already got, you don't need to do this from scratch and go, how would we make this better? That's a really powerful play. Mm -hmm because it's already maybe getting some engagement in the search engines and the social media platforms. So if you can go in and make it exceptional, and I've been amazed by this because we've been creating content for so long. We've got all this content on the website and somebody go, yeah, this is not great, right? Let's just, let's be realistic. Let's go back, how would we make this great? And, and then kind of go through and do that. Once we've gone through this process, we're then building this into a content calendar, okay? Our content calendar, this, this was a little revelation for me. So we, at the beginning of the year, we sit down and I sit with Louise <laughs> and we go through it and we plan out a year of content, okay? It was quite wild planning for like January, 2024. It was a bit crazy <laughs> in January, 2023. And we went through and we did every article, every podcast, every so video, mm -hmm. the courses we we're going to create. We left gaps for like news updates, all those kind of Louise, things. Louise, I salute you. I tell my hat off to you because the last day. five years I've been trying to get them to plan out stuff in advance yeah. and I'm lucky to get three months ahead. So that is... <laughs> Epic, that, that is te a 10x performance. Yeah, exactly. My vote, well done. Uh, and yeah. what was interesting was that I would then, every day before we do these video <laughs> recordings, I'm like, oh no, I've got to come up with a load of topics for videos. <laughs> and I sit down, I come up with a load of topics and I did a bullet point. And then last night I was sitting there um, and Susanna, who's our managing director, basically said to me, yeah, you, you, you've got to get up really early in the morning and do all these things. Yeah, gosh, it's a real pain. I, didn't, I was so tired today, I didn't get around to doing it. I've got to get up really early in the morning and do it. And she went... But it's all in the content calendar. And I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. So there is this realisation that actually yeah. we've got this planned out. Now, I needed to bullet point it all and so on. But yeah, the the, the, the planning makes your life easier going forwards. Yeah. There's space for adjusting it in there as well. But you get it into your content calendar. Right. So let's let's brief out what's in a good content calendar. Uh, we've got one you can download. It'll be in the show notes. Targetinternet.com forward slash podcast. You can download this. Kieran bought this, built this out originally. You put a date in. Starting so date. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you put the starting date in, it will give you a five day or seven day a week version and it will plan it out. I spent way too long doing that, but if you enjoy it, please let me know. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a good Excel <laughs> spreadsheet. It's really good. I don't know how you do it. We love an Excel. Magical Excel use. Oh, yeah. So first of all, you're obviously going to list off the topic um, of what it's going to be about. Then this is something that's missing in most of them, I think. If you've got four personas or 10 personas, doesn't matter. You need a little tick that says which personas this content is useful for because you'll suddenly realize you're missing one of the personas a lot by doing this, that's great. You then need your SEO column that says, on this topic, have we done the keyword research to work out how people actually search for this? Classic example, we were gonna write at the time, how do millennials use social media? And actually what people really search for is how do different age groups use social mm -hmm. media? Uh, I think like a thousand percent more search potential volume just by changing that in there as well. You then go in and you say, which social channels have you posted this out to? Um, and maybe how many times as well. Like you might not do one tweet, you might do 10. So have you done your social? Is this going out in a particular email list and newsletter? So you get use of the content via email as well. Then are there any particular influencers that we've already identified we should point this out to because they talk about this stuff a lot. So you do your influencers. Then you've got your advocates, internal advocates and external advocates, people that say nice stuff about you, point it out to those people. So by doing that in one spreadsheet, you have got the content, the SEO words, the personas, the email, social media, influencers, advocates. It should mean everything you create gets amplified mm. and it's all there mapped out so you don't miss it as well. Then, and something we're going to add in, I think, to the, the content calendar is the results, mm. i.e. how much reach did this get? How much engagement did it get? How much you know actual lead generation or whatever we're trying to achieve did it drive as well? Because then we can look back historically and go, that worked, that didn't work. That one needs improvement, that doesn't need improvement. There's always going to be a follow-up process within analytics to iterate. And, and that, that brings us back to that kind of last piece, which is how do you go through then? You need a process for iteration of content. Mm. And I think a leaderboard is a great way of doing that. Mm. And actually, you could just go to analytics and go top content, tell your most popular pages, take out your home page and your product pages and all that kind of stuff, and you'll be left with a list of content mm. And that's the stuff you need to look at and go, okay, stuff at the top, how do we make it even better so that we don't waste that traffic that's coming through to our website? Because if people start bouncing, they start not dwelling on that page very long, that's going to be really negative signals. But then the stuff that's further down, and that's maybe the stuff that's showing up page two, page three of Google, 
how do we just boost that a little bit? How do we make it a little bit better? And then revisiting the content calendar, older stuff, right? Let's re-promote this. Let's go, go through that stuff as well. On the planning process as well, there was a method that you talked me through a while ago about all the post-it notes mm -hmm. and about getting everyone involved yeah, in the business is, as there, well. There is, there is. Um, we've got sheets on this. We'll include yeah, we'll a link to a whole yeah. toolkit on, on this. We haven't talked about that for a while. No, right. But this is a process I developed over four years working in the beauty industry and working with agencies. So <clears throat> the only way I could pitch it to you all is... If in an hour you could get together with a few work colleagues and brainstorm minimum of three months worth of content yeah. and have a real laugh doing it. Like Yeah, you need to make it fun. It, it has to be fun. And it's it's kind of a pure play brainstorm. So you pretend that everything everybody says is brilliant. Right? <laughs> That's the first thing. And also you prevent negativity, right? By gamifying it. So if anybody says anything a bit negative, or a little bit kind of, oh, careful, that's soft brand, anything like that, or oh, we haven't got budget for doing that. They get the the object of shame. That could be a post-it note. It's been, when I was at Fat Face, it was a beanie hat with googly eyes on it, yeah. had all sorts of things. Um, but but it, you, you get stuck with that until somebody else, you catch someone else being a bit negative about something. So you gamify everybody being overly positive. And it's, it's a lovely space. Like you're creating a safe space for ideas because great ideas for content very often you know, you'll have two fairly average ideas, but Louise, you'll hear those and you make a connection between the two and come up with something really stunning. Um, now, some of the top like content creation agencies in the world use similar processes. Well, you don't need to pay them to do that. And actually, you'll way outperform them because you know your business and you know your customers way better than they could. Um, and I just think it's a it's this potentially... I've not ever run one of those sessions and without not come out something... With without an idea so good that actually everybody's quite tempted to like hand in their notice and just create <laughs> that thing. You know, that's the kind of enthusiasm you can get behind someone. Well, all that research that Google have done into what makes effective teams, one of the things they talk about is psychological safety. Mm. And what that means is that you're not going to be humiliated or embarrassed yeah. by saying something or yeah. Yeah. whatever. Yeah. So so the, the reality being what you're creating there is psychological safety. So yeah. people come up with wacky ideas and it means that you don't filter your own thinking as much. Yeah. And then, and there'll be some terrible, terrible oh, ideas. Some of them are laughably bad, but you have to pretend that they're good. You can't be negative about them, but you can build on them or come up with something else. Yeah, and and that stimulates things, things in the right direction. Yeah, your weakness will be someone else's strength. Yeah. So what you don't see in something, someone yeah. else across the team will yeah. see. Yeah, there's, there's other brainstorming when you put a list of, of words on a topic next to each other, two completely different topics, and then you combine them. Yeah. It's a similar kind of thing, like you're making your brain think in a different way as well. So... That, that that content planning process, you're filling in a content calendar so you can do this tactically, yeah. but you're starting with your target audience. You're looking at their journey, how it fits in. You're looking at what's out there already. You're going off, making sure it's better, and then you're iterating what you're doing. Yeah. But you have to process orientate this. Yeah. You can't just say, yeah, we're going to do it. It needs to be actually mapped out and time built in to do it. Yeah. It's a lovely idea like, right, we're going to do four blog posts a month, and then you come to do it, and it's like like me last night. Oh, right, the bullet point's going to get it out, get it done. You, you lose perspective if you do that and you need to do that planning. It's uh, hard to be creative on your own. Too. Yeah. Creativity yeah. Is, is something that isn't na naturally comes to everyone, but actually everyone is creative. Mm -hmm. And that's where, like, it's the innovation. It's the same thing is that you need to bake innovation into your organization and you do that with processes and so on as well. So we have got the toolkit that will help you uh, with the research tools. Uh, we've got the content calendar that's been updated. So we'll put that into the show notes as well. We've got Kieran's planning process. We've got a whole guidance document on those things as well. Um, and we'll link off to Rand stuff on 10X content. He's, he's got a list of 100 and something yeah. 10X content examples, the original Whiteboard Friday video. We should also did. mention Spark Toro, which is one of the best audience researched. Yeah, tools. that's absolutely right. So and good. The, interestingly, so the good. free version of Spark Toro, every now and again, I'm not sure if it's random or it's based on certain topics, it gives you complete access, not just like the little limited mm -hmm. trial access. It gives you all. So I did a thing on sustainability right. and I'm not sure if it was just a random thing or it's because I was talking about sustainability and they're trying to promote people kind of being involved in that. But it gave me all the stuff you don't mm -hmm. normally get. And it will, if you do a search within the free version, it then gives you that forever going mm -hmm. forwards as well. So they're being really generous in what they give away. So take a look at that for researching what people are engaging with audience wise and the popular websites and so on as well. So we put all this into the show notes, targetinternet.com forward slash podcast. And as ever, thank you for listening to the Digital Marketing Podcast. Please subscribe for more videos like this and visit targetinternet.com for more free digital marketing resources.